Dolphin gray and black, who wants one? I had him do it left-handed and he's not left-handed. <laughs> So it's mixing time. Um, just like you guys, you should already have your primer on. So we already got our primer on. Uh, typically primer dries within 45 minutes to an hour. It's basically sticky, but it's not wet. And so it's perfect time to go over it. So I'm gonna go over mixing. I'll, I'll go over the products we're gonna use and then the tool. So products here, gallon and a half. We got our gallon and a half dolphin gray pigment. And then we have our black effects. This is gonna be how we create those veins and that, that accent highlight color. One of the easiest kits right here to install because we're only mixing up one color, spreading that, dripping out our effects, blending it, and we're done. Pretty simple. So for mixing two five gallon buckets, we'll go over that. Drill, paddle mixer. I got five gallon stir stick. I got a one gallon stir stick for the epoxy pigment. And then this is just one of our notch squeegees that we cut to make them smaller. Um, I like to use this to spread the product quickly. You don't have to have one of these, right? It's pretty simple to spread the resin, but this does make it go extremely fast. And then we just cut them um, with a skill saw. Same thing with our flat squeegee. We cut these down as well, right? So skill saw, same thing, make them any size you want. Or you can just use like a Bondo squeegee. We've even used cardboard. Doesn't really matter what you use. You can use your hands, right? So pretty simple as far as blending the colors. And then last but not least, my gloves. So we're gonna dump in our part A first. Okay, so we got the part A dumped in the bucket. Now, what I like to do is just add the pigment, right? We wanna do as much stuff as we can before we add the hardener. And then if you guys get this pigment and it's been cold during shipment, or maybe it's sat in a cold garage and then you went to use it, it is gonna be pretty thick and hard. So you're gonna wanna warm that up. You can just use it like a hairdryer heat gun or you can just set this in warm water. Just make sure the water doesn't go to the lid. We don't wanna get any water in the pigment or the resin. All right, so we got the pigment in. Now we're gonna add our part B. So once we add this, the clock starts as far as how much working time you have with this product. And so we wanna move relatively quickly. All right, so we have an amazing way to mix and always have a consistent mix, right? Resin thoroughly mixed, no soft spots, no sticky spots. What it entails is starting at the top of the resin, spinning the drill all the way slowly to the bottom. Once you hit the bottom of the bucket, spin around a couple times, come back up slowly. Once you hit the top, spin around a couple times. That stands for one time. So we're gonna do that three times. And then the letter P stands for pour into a secondary container. This is gonna eliminate any unmixed resin on the sides. We'll scrape everything out into the secondary mixing container, and then we're gonna go up and down two more times. Once we're done mixing, we want to immediately dump it out onto the project. Never leave it sit in the bucket. Um, 
it's gonna generate heat faster and become unworkable a lot sooner. So once we dump it out, plenty of working time. And so the plan is dump all this out, right? This is 50 square feet. We have our standard, this is, this is what we call our standard countertop kits, which uses a gallon and a half for 50 square feet. All right, so Trey, you know, he's right-handed. I had him do left-handed, so he wasn't very dialed here, but that's all right. Spots that were running off the counter, I immediately grabbed the roller and just pushed it back, right? We don't want product just dumping off the counter right now. And so, so what he's doing now is he's just fine-tuning the beads, trying to make them the same thickness. This one's pretty good. This front edge that he he poured for us and I can also help him too with my roller so Ligari not squeegee cut down this is designed to put product down a 45 square foot a gallon this is that's for flooring counters go down uh, a little thicker about 33 34 and so this is mainly just to spread it quickly right and so you'll see why we like to use these because I can push product around very very quickly <laughs> that's, that's <a> good one. <laughs> hey I'll say that all right, all right. hey so if you guys think Trey did a good job pouring those beads out do a thumbs up or thumbs down and we'll know what that means. All right, so now I'm just gonna roll the whole counter nice and light, not trying to push any off the edges. And again, this is a 3 8 snap roller. I'm just getting it right to those edges. All right, once we're done with the top, we're gonna to start rolling the face. So what I like to do is saturate the roller. Roll a couple couple feet on the face, saturate that roller in a different spot, right? Another couple feet and just continue that until all our faces are hit. All right, so we got base coat down, faces hit. So cool thing about all our pigments is we could just, if you want that solid, one solid, nice, cool gray, like this dolphin gray, you could do gray counters, right? All the colors can just be left solid as well. So now we're gonna show, now I'm gonna show you how to do uh, the accent, the highlights. All right, so make sure we shake the effects up. <clears throat> and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just start out, remember I said I was gonna do a real subtle vein uh, pattern on this. I'm gonna start out with less, I can always add more. Can't really take color out once it's in there, right? So you'll see, I'll use the tip of this squeegee to blend. And then once I do that, I might flatten it off and blend it a little bit wider. And so I'm only gonna work in sections. I don't wanna do the whole vein on all of them and then come back and try to blend them. It's gonna blend better if you dump it out and blend it right away. So we're just gonna do, again, not very much. And you'll see this'll, this'll kinda, take over, right, the black. So you can see how subtle it is. Very cool, just real clean look. If we wanted to add more, we could. We could make it a lot blacker if we wanted by adding more effects. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna spritz it with isopropyl alcohol. That's gonna create some cells in these veins. We'll let that evaporate. Mist it with denatured alcohol. And then I like to run the roller on my faces, right? Because if you look, it's got a, kinda got some thin spots I wanna hit, but I always like to do that after I disperse the surface. So just small to medium drops everywhere. This will give it that natural stone look. 
Can you see any of those, James? Yeah. Like a darker tone. A little darker tone, right? They're kind of oh. randomly throughout it, which looks really cool. If you don't like that, we would just want to reactivate those pigments in that spot and it would get rid of it. All right, so we'll let that evaporate for about five minutes. Mist it with denatured alcohol. That's gonna create that glass smooth finish. If you don't have any bubbling or anything in it, you don't need, necessarily need to hit, hit it with denatured alcohol. Once that's done, roll the edges real quick. That's why I always like to keep the rollers. Don't set them down where there's like dust and stuff. Try to keep them for later. You can also use a paintbrush to just brush in these spots on the faces that are kind of dripping or not covering as well. So <clears throat> we don't wanna flood the surface, right, with DNA alcohol or isopropyl. What that's gonna do, it's gonna muddy out these very beautiful natural veins that we've created. And so that's why I like to let the isopropyl evaporate. And then when I mist it with denatured, I wanna do a fine mist, spray directly on the top, right? That way we're not flooding the counter, which will muddy out those, those veins. Just real quick. Don't worry about like brushing over a vein. This is still gonna drip and flow over the next hour or two. And you'll still get, like see, I brushed over this vein right here and it's already coming back down. Very simple. So we got all the edges hit now. Like I said, we're just gonna hang out next half an hour. Make sure everything drips over good, right? There's no missed spots. Probably now I would use a paintbrush, right? I don't wanna keep using the roller as the resin starts to thicken up. Key spots to look for outside corners, right? Mainly, mostly outside corners, inside corners, right? Like if we had a corner, inside corner, we'd wanna check something there. Just get a little resin, right? And then we're just gonna put it on the top. That's gonna let it flow over. Just slowly flow down. And then if we wanted to add any highlight colors to the faces, we can do that with the effects. Perfect. So I'll kind of demonstrate getting effects on the faces anywhere, right? Doesn't take much. Get some off of there. And I'm like, we could just follow that guy. Add any that we want, that looks good. So see, we added some color there, added some color here. Those were already coming over. So we'll call that good. So again, it's still gonna drip and flow. Always good to kind of watch it. Make sure there's nowhere you wanna hit. So last thing we're gonna do before it dries, it's, it's too early to do this. I'm just gonna demonstrate it for you. Putty knife, we're gonna scrape the drips. Now, you'll wanna do this check it you know once you're done maybe let it start to set up a little bit every 30 minutes come and check it and scrape these drips that's gonna make it so you don't have to come back and sand those off the next day 